So yeah, when it comes to all these ideas, like for instance, these ideas about um, building huge rockets, uh, huge rockets out of, I think the materials I'd like to use would be hemp thermoplastic and carbon fiber. So it'd be, um, as I've mentioned before, it'd be a, a carbon fiber frame, an airframe of the rocket made of carbon fiber largely. The airframe would be reinforced with hemp thermoplastic and likewise this carbon fiber hemp thermoplastic hybrid airframe would reinforce uh, a rocket exterior or shell constructed of hemp plastic so like the and i think also the fuel tanks could be made of hemp plastic possibly buttressed with a 3d printed outer layer of carbon fiber is that is that possible i'm just wondering because you know is it possible to like have an object that's already been 3D printed and then put that in a 3D printer or a different or in another 3D printer and sort of engrave or enamel, if you like, something like carbon fibre on the outside of it or just layer it in carbon fibre. If I want, say, like a, a mostly hemp plastic, hemp thermoplastic fuel tank, but I just want a carbon fibre layer over it, or a carbon fiber enriched fuselage of a of a plane, for instance, if that if that has any great advantages. I don't know, like would um like higher tensile strength actually be a benefit at very high speeds like Mach seven or Mach eight? That'd be a good thing to happen, I don't know. <laughs> the seven eight seven Dreamliner uses carbon fiber in his wings and airframe. It just makes me wonder, like, why the fuck Boeing aren't doing this already with the SLS system? I, I don't, I don't, um, the SLS thing, well, I know they use carbon fiber in some of it, obviously they do, but I mean, it seems like it wouldn't have happened, like this crumpling of the top of the rocket onto the, the fuel tank, and the fuel tank um, perforation itself. I know it's made of aluminium, not plastic, but um, like the, the plastic, of course, uh, the hemp plastic, this is, it, it's cheap, well, yeah, it's, uh, it has the same elasticity as, as aluminium, it's got the same, it's got a tensile strength greater than carbon steel, so it just makes me wonder, like, really why we're not using this? Or why we're not using plastic composites. I know there's like some research out there suggesting that um, they're not cryogenically very well behaved, or that at very low temperatures they they become brittle, which I suppose is a reasonable -ish reason for not wishing to make a rocket out of plastic. But I mean, they chuck away the rockets anyway. This is what I'm thinking. I mean, almost all of the rocket of any rocket really, Saturn V's included, you know, all the aluminium rockets have been built mostly, most of them, except um, Elon Musk has started reusing rockets and landing them again. Which, I suppose makes things, you reuse like a carbon, uh, carbon fiber enriched hemp thermoplastic rocket. If most of the rocket isn't actually leaving the atmosphere, I guess you could, no? And then, like, you've got your spacecraft in the payload of the rocket. And then you've got, like, in the nose cone of the rocket, like, fairings that detach. And within that, there is the payload. And so, like, everything on the outside is just a shell, basically. You don't need it to withstand cryogenic temperatures. You just need to put your Kevlar on whatever on the exterior of um, whatever ship you're putting up there, you know, and your your cryogenic resistant material or your heat resistant materials. And then again, I even wonder about like, other hemp fibers or composites, like really all that not or poor heat resistance. I mean, I know we can make concrete out of it, I know we can make bricks out of it. I know we can make sort of firmer textiles out of it. And I know the tensile strength of hemp thermoplastic 
So I'm just wondering, like, can we not make something like Kevlar out of it? <laughs> like, and then I go back to, like, why did DuPont want it illegal in the first place? Uh, I know in the first place it was to it was to flog like the worst material for clothing that has ever existed, fucking nylon. <laughs> like yeah, you wanted like you know nylon. And uh, was it spandex back in the day or something like crap like that? All this Dupont chemical crap clothing instead of hemp fabrics of some description or another. And we all know about William Randolph Hearst and the media and the paper industry. Like, and yeah, like the, the newspaper industry at the time. Like, yeah, William Randolph Hearst was a tycoon. He was a, he was a huge, hugely wealthy person. But then, like, you know, you've got um, DuPont in the background and you've got Carnegie, the steel magnate. Um, you know, wanting to resist the era of plastic skyscrapers and uh, all this sort of thing. And then, of course, you've got, you know, Darth Sidious himself, old Rockefeller, like creeping around in the background, the the oil baron, because, of course, you're going to make fuel out of hemp, which sort of fucks everything up. Like, one or two, like, actually in support of hemp, like Henry Ford, I believe, was in support of hemp. And, you know, Ford is like, fucking hell, like, this would be the dream for me, manufacturing cars like this shit. And, like, wasn't, like, aviation people, maybe? I think it was actually a bit before then that this all started really coming into effect. Aviation was, like, nothing in 1919, wasn't it? The International Open Convention about then. <laughs> so, yeah, like, all these laws were coming into effect back then, but aviation was just sort of taking off. And it was probably the industry that most could have used hemp plastic, because we'd be building hypersonic plastic aircraft right now that could fly around the globe at Mach 12 or something, instead of aluminium tubs built by Boeing and Airbus. And like this, the supersonic, uh, the hypersonic jets, like, would it also save on the fuel? We probably wouldn't even be using petroleum really to fuel them at this point if we'd have that. You do understand that, don't you? Like, we would have missed a golden age of rocketry, you know, because of this. We'd have gone to Neptune in the 70s. We'd have built a rocket the size of the Chrysler building and uh, stuck a big ship on it. We'd have launched a rocket the size of the Empire State Building. We'd plonk something the size of a submarine on it. I, I, launching a nuclear sub into space. Mm, maybe that's quite a lot heavier than the ISS. A small submarine. <laughs> then again, like, what's a nuclear submarine in space shuttles? <laughs> you, no, using a 747 as a unit of measurement. A nuclear submarine couldn't be more than six. Like, seven four sevens, could it, in weight? Oh, but then again, oh, wait, fuck me, they've been using hemp thermoplastic. So, like, yeah, the nuclear sub for them would be, like, also... See what I mean? Far lighter and actually stronger. Ah. <laughs> oh yeah, material science. I came across that one. Like, um, I was down the pub. I was actually I was working in the pub, and this happens at the pub where I worked. Like um, Matthew Turner, who's a physics professor at the University of Warwick, and I know him. Uh, he was down the pub with uh, his brother, <laughs> and um, a friend of his was also an academic at Warwick in the material science department, he was a material scientist, and I quipped to him, it was like, uh -huh, DT, <laughs> like, DT, it was like, uh, and Matthew was like, mm -hmm, grumbled a bit at that, and I was like, I was just having a laugh, but obviously, like, DT is a great subject, DT is basically engineering anyway, why don't you just call it engineering? <laughs> like, it is engineering, DT is engineering, design and technology, 
why don't you call it engineering? Because that's what it's called at university. It's nonsense. You don't study design and technology at university. You study engineering at university, don't you? Like it includes design and technology if you want. But whatever. Um, yeah, we'd have done all this in the 70s. We should have had an aerospace industry whose like, first thought would be, you know, building hemp thermoplastics. Or like, building, uh, manufacturing hemp thermoplastics to build huge planes and things. But we didn't have that. There are many wood and there are actually steel and aluminium. Because, like, you know, mining magnates like, have their balls in vices, probably with all sorts of other contracts to, like, fund whatever they're doing. And, like, Rockefeller wanted none of it. Randolph Hearst uh, stood to lose a fair bit out of it. It was, like, investments in the timber industry. But, yeah. And now, like, the idea of a plastic skyscraper didn't really appeal to Carnegie, who we had to like retool his steel mills, which can't really be retooled as hemp plastic manufacturing facilities. But then, like, also hemp <laughs> plastic manufacturing, if it were legal, I imagine would be uh, far easier than manufacturing steel, wouldn't it? No, you wouldn't have to heat it all that much. I mean, it is, after all, plastic. Does it need to be resistant to very high temperatures? To make a skyscraper out of it, I can't think why it would need to resist very high temperatures. Like, what if someone sets fire to it? Halon? Um, fire extinguishers. Or someone sets fire to a steel frame skyscraper. Right. They also have like paneling or the flammable components. Or someone sets fire to a building that's framed with steel. Or wood for that matter. <laughs> Which we still make. We still make houses out of wood. Or with wooden frames. My mum's like loft was well my mum's house loft was wooden, you know. That was built in like the seventies. Is that your re is that your concern? I doubt it would catch fire anyway. If we find a way to insulate it from fire. I don't know, by putting metal over it, possibly. Like, you know, aluminium siding can do that. Coat it in metal. Somehow make it flame resistant. <laughs> but it's, it's not the point. The point is, yeah, we've had plastic jets and plastic aircraft, plastic rockets, you know. Eventually, Getting to enormous sizes. And yeah, we could have gone to like Neptune in a submarine ish sized spacecraft. Wouldn't that be great? Or would it not? Like, would it not intrigue you to watch it? To like watch the footage come in from the astronauts? as like, they present you know, Jupiter to you and do a tour of the moons of the gas giants, you know, finding out what is on each and this, that and the other, and exploring in general. Would, would that not interest you? I mean, come on now. Like, if that doesn't interest you, fucking nothing will, will it? Like, no idea would, and that's like, now because it's like, it's an out there idea. You just can't see that there's plain and obvious truth. We were robbed by demonic forces. <laughs> like, 
of of a basic right of humanity. Like this is given in the Bible. Hence, any sort of movement to subvert that is anti-Semitic, or to you know overturn that basic right. It's like you know in the Jewish, Islamic, and Christian traditions. No, you can't take someone's right to grow a fucking plant away from them. That's idiotic. That is like, yeah, that's a mark of people trying to seize the power of the Almighty. That's grotesque. And yeah, it just held us back unnecessarily. It get, it caused the deaths of, well, hundreds of millions of people, I'd have imagined, at this point. And we all bleat on about Hitler, don't we? Being so evil. But, like, these people... These people are the real mass murderers. These people, like, sort of gave rise to Hitler. And then... Unapolo and loads of them... Loads of them, like, American capitalists in the 30s. They supported Hitler. They were funding Hitler. But, um... It's not... So much like a blame game, you know, I think. So much because obviously Britain was involved in this as well, and the great steal of like morphine, heroin, and cocaine money from Germany at the end of World War One. That's what we were after. Oh dear, that's pretty shitty. <laughs> like from like a monarch who couldn't have read. A monarch is the head of the church as well, like. You couldn't have read, you know, Genesis. <laughs> Clearly, didn't read the book of Genesis. That's like what the evidence would seem to suggest on that level. And yeah, it's sacrilegious. And on that level alone, for that reason alone, like, I'd be allowed to smoke cannabis wherever I like <laughs> and grow absolutely as much of it as I please. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like, and there should be no restrictions on it at all. That's actually the the right thing to do. Likewise with the opium poppy and the coca plant and all of it. No restrictions. And then, and only then, I suspect, can we build start building, you know, rockets the size of Empire State buildings, and getting out of this solar system, and exploring the galaxy, because I believe that is possible. I don't think I know it's possible. Yeah, I think I know it's possible. So yes, do this, please. <laughs>